Hi everyone, in this video we're going to prove that any function that has a bounded derivative must be uniformly continuous. So if you have a function where the derivative exists and it's bounded on the set of real numbers, then f is uniformly continuous on the set of real numbers. So before we do the proof, I'm going to briefly, briefly recall some definitions that we need uh, before we do the proof. So f is uniformly continuous means the following. So f is, and I'll just say uni continuous, just to save time, on negative infinity to infinity, if, well, if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero. Notice the delta here uh, is written after the epsilon. It only depends on epsilon. It does not depend on x and y. So f is uniformly continuous on the set of real numbers if for all epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all x and y, and let me just use this symbol here to save time, the set of real numbers, with the distance between x and y being less than delta, we have the distance between f of x and f of y being less than epsilon. So f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. So that's a definition that we need because that's what we're trying to show in this problem. Um, a function is bounded if whenever you take the absolute value of that function, it's less than a number for every x. So uh, f is bounded if there exists a constant m, which we can assume is positive, such that for all x and r, the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to m. So that's the definition of what it means for a function to be bounded. I'm going kind of fast here just because I'm recapping these definitions just in case you know you, you don't know them. But ideally, they're, they're fresh in your mind. And if they're not, hopefully this makes uh, a little bit of sense. So a function is bounded. If there is a number m such that for every x, whenever you take the absolute value of that function, um, it's less than or equal to m. And you can assume it's positive because if, well, this is an absolute value, so it's zero or positive. So if this is zero, if m is equal to zero, you can just make it m plus one. And then all of a sudden, uh, life is good. Um, so we have to prove that it's uniformly continuous. To do that, we're going to use the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem says that if you have a function that is continuous and differentiable on an interval, you can find the number c such that, let me just write it here. So if you have a function that is continuous on a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b, so if you have both of these conditions, um, then the mean value theorem says that then there exists a number c in a, b, such that if you look at f of b minus f of a, that's equal to f prime of c times b minus a. So this is the mean value theorem. So it's a lot of stuff going on in this problem. In order to do this problem, you have to know some, some, some calculus and some advanced calculus. You have to know these definitions uh, and you have to know the mean value theorem. Otherwise, um, it's game over. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and prove this. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to apply the mean value theorem and we're going to use the fact that the derivative is bounded because you see here you have f of b minus f of a. Here you have f of x minus f of y. So that's the idea. And then when we take the absolute value of this, we're going to have an absolute value here. And then we know that f prime is bounded. So the absolute value of this will be less than some number. So let's go ahead and work through the proof carefully. So proof. So I'll start by supposing this. So suppose uh, the derivative exists and is bounded, say, by m greater than zero on this set here, negative infinity to infinity. So I'll assume it's positive because if it's zero, you can just add one and call it a new variable and life is good. So now we have to prove um, that it's uniformly continuous. And I kind of want to uh, think about what's happening. I'm going to do some scratch work over here away from the proof. So this is not part of the proof. I'm going to try to like figure it out on the side as I, go, as I go through it. So we want to show it's uniformly continuous. So we'll start by letting epsilon be greater than zero and all of that stuff. So maybe I'll start with that. So let epsilon be greater than zero. So that's the beginning of the definition for uniformly continuous. But now I have to choose my delta. So, so now I'm stuck. So now I have to go over here 
and try to, to figure out what in the world is this delta gonna be. I actually, I have an idea, but I think I need to write it down. So we know that if x minus y is less than delta, we want, we want f of x minus f of y to be less than epsilon. And so what I think we can do is uh, we can take uh, a delta at some point, I don't know what that delta will be, such that we can do something like this. So that's the idea, right? We want to use the mean value theorem on this, and we can say that this is equal to something like this. And we know that this is less than or equal to m, right? Because it's bounded. So this will be x minus y. So we want this to be less than epsilon. So I'm thinking we can make this, this will be less than m delta. And we want it to be less than epsilon, so we can choose delta to be epsilon over m. This will be m, epsilon over m. Yeah, that'll do it. So that will be our delta. Our delta will be epsilon over m. So you see how I figured it out? I haven't done this problem uh, before making this video, so I'm kind of doing it on the fly. And that's on purpose, so that you can kind of see the thinking that goes behind it. So, so we have the epsilon greater than zero now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and write choose delta. So choose, back to our proof, delta equals epsilon over m. Okay, now we need to be careful. We need to apply the mean value theorem. So in the next part of the definition, we have to use this. So I'm going to say that. So take any x, y, in the set of real numbers. And it matters which one is bigger and which one is smaller, right? It does matter. So I'm going to assume, so assume without loss of generality. So I want it to match this. I want it to match uh, f of x uh, minus f of y, because I want it to match the definition. It, it doesn't make a big deal if you don't do that, but it makes it a little bit better. So for that to happen, if you look here, um, you have to have f of b minus f of a. So b has to be bigger than a. So in this case, I'm going to want um, y to be, um, I'm going to want x to be bigger than y. So assume without loss of generality that x is bigger than y. So then, by the mean value theorem, this is why I chose that, um, there exists a c. And so x is bigger than y, so we're looking at this interval here, yx, such that when you look at f of x, minus f of y, that's equal to f prime of c times x minus y. See, I rigged it so that it would match this uh, here, uh, right here. You see, um, so, I, so I'm applying this to yx. So this is your a, this is your b. So it's f of b minus f of a, b minus a. You could use x, y. It's not going to matter because when you take the absolute value, you can reverse the order. I'm just trying to be... Um, good, especially since I haven't done this problem before making this video. So now we'll take the absolute value of this. So then, the absolute value of f of x minus f of y, that's equal to the absolute value of f prime of c, absolute value x minus y, that's less than or equal to m, right? Because the derivative is bounded by m. That means that f prime of x is less than or equal to m for all x, right? Because m is a bound. Remember, that's the definition of a bounded function. And this is x minus y. We know that the absolute value of x minus y is uh, less than delta. I forgot to write it. So we're not done with the proof. So I can do it here. Um, suppose. Yeah, see? So you can go back and kind of fill in the stuff you're missing. So I was trying to do the scratch work and the proof at the same time, so you see I filled it in. So take any x and y and r, suppose that the distance between them is less than delta, and we can assume without loss of generality that x is less than y. By the mean value theorem we have this. Now we're looking at this difference here. This is m times delta, and then delta is epsilon over m. So this is equal to m times epsilon over m, which is equal to epsilon, and that completes the proof. So maybe not the prettiest presentation, but what you see here on the board is a perfectly correct proof, right? There's, there's no mistakes. Let's read it together. So suppose the derivative exists and it's bounded, say, by m greater than zero on the interval. That is our hypothesis here. 
The claim is that the function is uniformly continuous. So we took an epsilon greater than zero, right here. We chose our delta, right here. We took any two elements, x and y, and we assumed that the distance between them was less than delta. I forgot to do that in the proof, but that's okay. It shows that, because that, that's how people figure it out. No one sits down and just writes a perfect proof every time. It, that doesn't happen, right? But we're, if you're able to fix it like I did, then, then you got this. So we're here. Assume with loss of general that x is bigger than y. I did this so that when I use the mean value theorem on yx, it's f of x minus f of y, f of b minus f of a. So we're here. Now you take the absolute value. This is less than m. This hangs out. This is less than delta. And we chose our delta to be epsilon over m. So everything cancels and we get epsilon. So really nice problem. So if you have a function that has a bounded derivative on the real line, it is uniformly continuous. That should make sense. Uniformly continuous functions have, they don't have like, it's, it would look something like this. Right, uniformly continuous function would look nice and pretty. It would not do this. There's no like abrupt changes in, in Y. The continue, continuity is uniform. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there who's working on something like this. Uh, if there's anyone out there doing it, good luck to you. Take care.